am here with Lynn Suprock, and she has brought the most adorable book necklaces ever. They're so cute. Thank you. I love like the little owl one and the birds, and I see you can do them in shapes. Like there's a little house shape there, and you said that it's super easy, and even I could do it. Even you can do it, that's right. It's really easy. So to get started, what we need is something very simple as well. We're gonna use credit cards or old groom keys or whatever you have that you bring home sometimes. And then we're going to take that and make templates. And that's going to be your pages. So, so to make your template, you just trace that shape onto right. regular paper. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is cardstock. Then I also, I brought along some of the handmade paper that I have and I did that as well. So you have your option of what you wanna fill your book with when you're finished. So you have your pages and then you're gonna take that credit card and you're gonna cut it in half so that you have it two pieces. And you're also gonna take Take one of your pages, you're going to also cut that in half because we'll use that as a template later to make the little holes. So when once you do that, we come over and then we would use our two pop part epoxy clay. We're going to take that in one big ball, mush it all around, mix it all up. Doesn't really, sometimes it's a little marbled, but that's okay. It doesn't affect the hardening, hardening of it. So I would take one of my halves of credit cards and I would take one of the balls of clay and I would just smoosh it down like that. Just gonna smoosh it. Now we're it making the, the covers of the book as right. opposed to the pages, which were super easy. You could do paper, you could do photographs, mini tiny scrapbook, you right. could have love notes inside. Right, and a little artwork from you. Whatever you know, it is, but we're just making prints you know that would be cute little dogs yeah. yeah so after I get the clay molded on there I really want to make sure the edges are clean so I'll come on my craft mat and just kind of scrape it off like that so oh, I just I thought you were going to use a blade or something I don't even use a blade I don't need to, to have the blade but you say I have some fingerprints or, or, mm -hmm. or glove marks in there how to get that out of there or to make it smooth is just to add a little bit of this uh, epoxy two-part epoxy solvent so I'm just kind of smoothing it see how oh. that nice and smooth you can, I thought maybe you were going to use like a like a roller, like you no, do with polymer clay or you, something like no, that. No, you could, but I'm quick, and it's instant gratification. That's you know that's what I do sometimes. So you smooth it all out, and once you've done that, I have two right here that have hardened. Um, after just a few hours, it gets hardened, and then I. Um, have before I before it hardens, I'm going to also put some stamping into it. So I'm going to use an embossing plate and I'm going to just press it in like that. I have to point this out because I think this. this is an incredibly cool idea, which is these are embossing folders that you would normally use in a right. traditional die cutting machine, but you have cut them apart. You have yeah. ripped them into two tools and I now know. you are using them basically as texture plates. That's what I have them for, texture plates. I also have another other ones that are nice and not cut apart, but these are cut, so I use them as but the, you that. could use a rubber stamp, right? That's you right. Use... You can use a rubber stamp or anything to put the texture into it and release. And because you have this agent, which you've been using to smooth it down, does right. that mean that it won't grab onto whatever? Correct. So if you didn't Thank use you. that, you would probably have to use some kind of release agent. Very good point. You want to have something that's going to release out your, your product that you're stamping in or your embossing folder. So once I have that done, I'm going to choose to make mine into a necklace. You don't have to. You can have a little book of, of your own um, just to write in. But I have a little jump ring that I'm going to now kind of embed right into that clay as so it sits are there. are you putting it just like, it's just it's a sliver in the top there. Just You're not even worrying the, about it. You're right, shoving it in there, no adhesive. Right, right, because when that clay dries, that's going to be cemented in there and you don't have to worry about it falling out. So I'm going to just remove my gloves. And I'm going to come over here. So after that's happened, I have uh, samples. Remember, we have the back plate. It's the credit card that's still now, on there. How long did this dry for to be this hard? Um, I left this product uh, for this project overnight. Okay. And then I just, you know, had it nice and hard, and there was no question about it. So I'm going to take this plate off now, and I'm going to use just dental tools, clay tools. Um, kitchen say, knife. Kitchen knife, but, you know, dedicated. Mm, dedicated, don't yeah, use it on so, food. So what I'm going to do is come uh, into a, one of the corners. Can you see mm -hmm. I got a corner? And then I'm just going to make it come all the way around, and it's going to pop and right And you didn't off. put a release agent on that card before no, putting the clay in. So I it's important, not. obviously, that it's plasticky. It is important and that it's plasticky. I assume if you used a credit card that had raised numbers, you'd, you might see those numbers <laughs> in the back of that. It's a way to emboss in there another way, go. right? So what I'm going to do after I pop that um, credit card off is I'm just going to use a little acrylic. I'm going to paint both sides because I want it to be black. Um, and that's because I'm going to want it to show up in a different way with a metallic Well, I was paste. also going to say you're painting both sides because remember, we're making a book and a book you'll see both sides right. of the cover, right? Right. Good point. Thank you. When you open the book, you can 
you can add other pieces of paper, you can do something inside, but it's easy to just have it painted. Well, because before it we looks go any good. further, I noticed that this has holes. So why don't yes. we talk a little bit about those yes, holes? Yes, it does, and you're right. Before the clay does dry, I have a skewer that I've used. I the, like your high-tech tools. I've used the template, thank you. And and the template would lay right onto the clay. So I know that when we originally cut one of those pages in half, this is the template that you made, and yes, you simply earlier. put five holes in one side right, and right. one hole on the other side. Right. The just so that you could go ahead and create basically the holes you need to stitch the book together. Right, at the end you're gonna stitch the book together and you're gonna add jump rings so that you can tie it together with some ribbon. So when, once you have your holes and it's, it's dried and it's painted, I'm gonna add a little bit of the paste and, and you can do that with your finger or add, add it with some well, gloves. Well, let's add some paste. So, that, looks like, that looks like a little too much well, fun not to have. Come on, Lynn. Well, let's just here, we'll move all these tubes out of the way. And it's a metallic paste that I do use mm -hmm. to do this. So we're gonna get this effect by adding this to your pinky. You're going to end up just rubbing it like that, and you'll see how that kind of You know what I love top. about this is that raised surface, so the black lines stay in sort of the recessed surfaces. Right. Whereas the paste only goes on those raised surfaces, and the effect that you get in the end is this is lovely sort of aged, antique, distressed look. It is. If you put more paste on, you'll get a heavier coat of that up, and if you don't put as much on and you get a lighter coat. Fantastic, so if you wanted to glue an embellishment on, you're just gonna use a two-part resin or something. Right, it's actually, there's a paste mm -hmm. um, with this two-part epoxy, there's a two-part epoxy paste, and that's just like a glue where you mix part A and B, a little bit on the back of your embellishment, and it sticks to it like cement. And of course, if you didn't wanna make a tiny little necklace, you can make a big book that stands alone. I love it, it's perfect for a wedding, yes. an engagement, a party, anything like that. This is a beautiful idea. I love the book necklace that you're wearing. Oh, yep, done the same way, a little bit of a different template, and again, you have ribbons, jump rings, embellishments. You can make it your own. It's just It's got very that little unique. niche in the center for a photo. I love it. And of course, if you want to know how to stitch a book block together, you can visit our website and find all of that out.